Hey, Geekscapists, welcome to our brand new Geekscape podcast. I'm Jonathan London, your host. And if this is your first Geekscape, well, maybe you're only joining us because we're going to be talking all about WandaVision, the Marvel series that just uh, wrapped up on Disney+. Plus. I think y'all have had the weekend to watch it. If this is live and you're watching this on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch, um, then you're, I think you're set. You've had the weekend to digest it and to accept the fact that none of your theories came true. Well, some of our theories didn't come true either but if you're looking for a normal geekscape where i sit down with a guest and talk the latest news and reviews or do a little interview well go back on the feed and that's more of a normal geekscape because this episode we're going to be talking strictly about wandavision all nine episodes what it might mean for the rest of the mcu uh maybe some of the other stuff comics wise or tv wise that you might want to watch if you, like you were like hey what was the dark hold well you probably want to watch agents of shield and runaways the other two marvel series that were on uh abc and on one was on Freeform, Hulu. I know that they're all on, available on Netflix and Hulu. Uh, and if you're thinking about like, hey, what was the origin of the comics? Wait, did, did Wanda have kids with the vision in the comics? Yes, she did. We can talk all about it. Uh, but you know what? We're going to need an expert. So if you haven't watched WandaVision, uh, this is your actual spoiler warning because Ian Kerner wants to talk about it. He's coming. And uh, you know how we do this. We've been doing it since the beginning of Geekscape just talking nonstop. He's the uh, encyclopedic know-it-all of comic fandom. And uh, he started the first, you know, he did the first Geekscape with me. And uh, here he is to talk WandaVision. Ian, how are you, buddy? Good. How you doing? Good, man. I was, uh, I, I actually told you to like close all your windows and stuff before you started. And I actually didn't close all the windows on my computer before I started. So uh, I'm a bad, bad host. But uh you know, that's kind of the, the the risk of going live with these things. So if you're listening on the podcast, you don't care about all that. You would just want us to get to WandaVision and start talking about what happened in the series. Um, but ultimately, I sent you a text a little bit after I'd watched the uh, finale. I think I'd sent it either the next morning or later that day. Uh, just saying, hey, um, blank, blank, blank about the finale. And you didn't respond. And I think it's because you like to save kind of our thoughts about something until right after we until we do this podcast i think well, that was our original tradition right and yeah. i think we we've we for the most part we've done pretty good with it every now and then we're so overwhelmed with something that we can't help but say it but you literally sent me the text and then you said you might want to save it so i just ignored you okay <laughs> that shouldn't be hard to do <laughs> Geekscape is that's what it's like being friends with Ian. Y'all have known him for uh, like 15 years at this point. So, uh, yeah, ultimately, um, my feelings about the finale, and we'll start at the finale and then we'll unpack the whole series because I think we, okay. we love the series. I think that's yeah. pretty obvious. We love all nine episodes. We love the series. Geekscapists who've been watching the show weekly, Katie and I love talking about uh, WandaVision. You've pretty much heard our thoughts on WandaVision through the first nine episodes at the tail end of every Geekscape episode. We've been saving it to the end of the episodes to avoid spoilers for people who haven't seen it so they can bail and maybe come back and listen to it later. But now we're going to talk about all nine episodes and uh, there's no avoiding the spoilers. So the finale, I said, hey, I was feeling a little disappointed by that finale and it wasn't because any of the uh, like theories or any of that stuff didn't come true. I actually had a little bit of issues about what was going on blocking wise or story wise with some of the characters because everything started ha it had to kind of come together there in the finale. And I was like, did they really maximize some of the potential of, and we'll get into it, a characters like Monica Rambeau who shows up. She's one of the most powerful characters there, even though she may not be familiar with her powers quite yet. Right. Um, and she does a lot of standing there yeah, in you the know, square. I mean, we could definitely debate the reasons why, uh, you know, it, what I, I'm reminded of something that um, I get into in conversations about television a lot, in particular watching British television, which I feel like streaming series are kind of going towards that model of that shortened season thing where, you know, you get more bang for your buck. But, you know, a, as Americans, you, we're used to like those long seasons of 22, 26 episodes, you know, we grew up on. And while there's definitely ends up being a lot of filler when you have that many episodes, you also get to develop things at a slower pace and you get to take certain, um, a certain amount of time, you know, with things that, 
that I, I think you got accustomed to. You know, the interesting thing about this, what's great about this, about this series, and I'm reminded of going back to what we talked about back when the Netflix series started, you know, and you know, that first season of Daredevil, it was like, wow, if everything could be like this. I remember specifically having a conversation with you in which at that time you said to me that, you know, you weren't into the Berlanti shows that, that you know, that DC was doing on the CW because they didn't hold up the Daredevil, to which I said, listen, every comic you read isn't Watchmen, right? Sure. But, but to the point, you know, the weird thing in that moment was, wow, you're going to get all this development with what's considered a B character, Daredevil, and yet, you know, your Spider-Mans, you know, um, your X-Men didn't get that much, right? Um, and, of course, with, Mar with the Marvel Studio stuff, it was Captain America, it was Iron Man. So, you know, with these series, what's great is we're now getting to delve in a little bit deeper. I mean, looking at it, you know, Wanda and Vision have now had basically what's a six-hour movie. I mean, they've now had more screen time than any of the other MCU characters. Yeah, I, I think you can argue maybe Iron Man or Cap are equal to it, only because their movie started mm -hmm. years before, you know, maybe mm -hmm. Thor because he had three films going into it and but appeared it, in other it, films. But yes, it's maybe because, because it's also screen maybe. time wise. Yeah, yes. yeah. Because and even screen time wise, they're not they're not on as much as this. This is and, focused on them, right? And for Captain America, you have to count. The Spider-Man Homecoming uh, infomercials too to get that screen. Well, time. sure you do, but but <laughs> I, I'm not saying it. the number of appearances as much as literal screen time. But so you know, I mean, listen, it's great. I, I love that they're doing that, and yet, and basically coming back around to my point, which is, and yet, it still feels like it wasn't enough, right? Because what we're used to, what my reaction to the idea of doing, you know, comic books as episodics that are good, you know, and even not to go off on the tangent about shows like the Berlanti shows, but you know, but you're getting comic books, Yeah, you know, you're get you're getting like, you know, we're used to, you know, minimum 12 issues in a year and they're going on for years and years. And it takes that long to develop these stories, you know? So, and you know, and there, there are people that will say, Oh, it's so soap operatic. Right. But that's what comic books are. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they really are. Um, so it's an interesting point. Um, I think that there was a, a definite decision with Monica Rambeau to hold back and wait for Captain Marvel too. clearly, you know, and that's where we're going to get that developed. We got her origin story here and now they're going to throw her in, you know? Um, yeah, I, I definitely was disappointed. I thought she'd do more, but she has a couple of really pivotal moments in this. Yeah. She gets, you know, to she, save the, she, she saves the two white kids. Right. She saves the two that? white kids who are that? imaginary and, and disappear, right? <laughs> you can understand the outrage, right? I mean, if there's outrage, I mean, what is the argument exactly? That the character was only there to service the other characters like that. Yeah, I mean, keep in mind, she's a hero. So I understand that. Like, she's a hero. They're two kids. She's going to save them. She's a full on hero. And I, listen, I get the point, but it's all about setup. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about. I, I, I certainly I understand that analysis, but I just think that, you know, I don't want to say that they're above or beyond it, per se, but they're, you know, they're servicing at a higher level. And when I say higher level, I mean like it's a deep, deep dive going back years and years to how they're developing these characters. I mean, bringing it all around to the end of, of this show, it's going all the way back to Age of Ultron. They introduce Wanda and we're going Scarlet Witch, Scarlet Witch. When are they going to call her Scar Scarlet Witch? And they wait all the way to here to make it a pivotal point of this whole thing is she's now the Scarlet Witch. Yeah, I think that's seven, eight years from Age yeah. of Ultron to actually yeah. call her the Scarlet Witch and show her as the Scarlet Witch. And there's a reason that they waited that long, right? I mean, it was all about this series to, to bring it out. Well, I think that a lot of this stuff is happening organically. And it, when you start popping these characters out and just giving them nicknames and comic origins, sometimes the audience isn't ready for that stuff, right? It took a Guardians mm -hmm. of the Galaxy to show the weirder parts of the Marvel Universe. We had pretty close to Iron Man type realism real world stuff happening and then we got thor and that added a, a fantasy element and even with thor they were grounding the magic and the fantasy as just another form of science and here the walls have kind of been just torn off and saying you know what 
y'all have seen like at this point y'all have seen a living planet y'all have seen a talking raccoon and tree y'all have seen uh, thanos and time travel y'all have seen dr strange y'all are ready for it now we can call her the scarlet witch because but they, they did a good job of personalizing her as wanda first and foremost as a human being with a brother who has suffered loss and i love how much that, that is what the series is about is trauma and loss and um in dealing with that in the ptsd and then the relationship with vision here i thought that that scene that everybody loved quoting what is grief if not love persevering that scene in the bedroom i think that that i think i texted you and justin said that scene did more for me in establishing their relationship than anything that we'd seen in their characters since i mean at all including age of ultron civil war and the uh the two last avengers movies like we read i I got it i was like i get it this was the moment i was missing in those films yeah, absolutely. But but I, I don't want to go off. I don't want to lose focus of where I was going with, okay. with the point on the code name, which is, you know, they've they've managed to. I don't want to use the term comic book in a pejorative manner because, you know, I love comic books, but I, I can accept and appreciate going back to what you said about the real worldness of it, that sometimes, you know, they manage to avoid it being hokey. Captain America as a code name. And, you know, I think the first Captain America movie, the first Avenger is underrated. For some reason, a lot of people don't love that movie. I think it's a masterpiece. I think you know, it's I really think all, great. All, yeah, yeah. I, it's just, you know, just, I mean, what I'm speaking at in, in this moment in particular is they embrace the hokiness for the USO thing of it, right? Like yes, it's, it his, he is propaganda. Right. right. Yeah. So the, the outfit, the name, all of it is about selling, you know, war bonds and all that stuff, you know, and, and, and that's great. And of course, so then he's Captain America, you know, Iron Man was sort of a, you know, he built armor, you know, and, you know, fine, you know, he, that, that, that's what he's into. Great. But for the most part, Spider-Man was a kid, you know, who of course needed a secret identity, but for the most part, they don't do that, you know, and Thor, and, and that is his name. Thor's his name Thor's and Black Widow and Hawkeye. And they they scrapped the whole uh, thing with with Donald Blake. Like they didn't even right. try and make. No, they don't do it. They Donald don't do Blake. it. No, they and, gave him and, a name tag that said Donald Blake, and that was as close they got to that kind of stuff. They were like, no, we don't need to ground him in realism at all. He's well, no, they flat out say it was her ex. You know, right. yeah, it's fine. It's a different person. It's fine. But you know, and then I'm saying Black Widow and Hawkeye. Well, th- those are call signs because they're a spy, military, what have mm-hmm. you. You know, so yeah. th- they make sense. But for the most part, they're not doing that. So all along, she's Wanda Maximoff. That's what she is until she gets this title. And I, I just, I, I think that was, frankly, I think it's brilliant. I think it, it develops well. You know, I, I like it a lot. Um, for me, that moment, she's the Scarlet Witch, and when the outfit appears, you know, I mean, it's like, wow. I mean, and, and they'd already, you know, I, 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 we'll, we'll go through all of it, but, you know, the the whole thing, the Halloween episode, all of them being in those classic costumes, and then being intentionally corny looking, you know, was great. Because they just had that very com- old comic booky feel which wouldn't hold up now even the materials you know yeah. it's just and even different Billy and tommy are in their young avengers outfits yeah which i love great you know Same. because when you see an iteration of those young avengers comics no doubt in the future because we will I, this is no way the last time we see billy and tommy um you're gonna see iterations well, of that costume and be like oh wait yeah that's familiar that's kind of cool well look look i mean they've been around, you know, after the, the, the latest giant Marvel, you know, crossover, you know, um, so, you know, Hulkling's now the you're emperor. About, of, right. Yeah. You're talking about, uh, I just put these books away, but you're talking about empire. The last yes. Marvel crossover. With a, empire with a Y. Exactly. Empire with a Y. <laughs> right. I so, actually liked that crossover, which, you know, yeah. I think there was a lot of Marvel crossover fatigue when we got to it and people were very skeptical of it. Um, but that well, was well, they well, actually they liked. unloaded it because of COVID. So realized that that thing was supposed to start, and then COVID pushed there being no books for over a month, and then it was just like every week you got like five chapters, and <laughs> and they cut a bunch of them, you know. So so you got the whole thing in like two months. That might be why I liked it because yeah. I could follow it without reading too many books. I stuck to the core books, and then the tie-ins of the issues of the series that I was already reading. And right. you know, sadly, I of course I read all of yeah. it. I know, but, 
I know. Yeah. It, but, it, no, but I, I, I did. I, I skipped all of King of Black, except again, the tie-in books of the books I was already reading. And it's I heard good, King but... of Black is good. Yeah, it is. But we'll talk about Venom this summer when Venom 2 comes out. We'll save all of our <laughs> we'll save our symbiote talk for that. Um so Ian, we loved it. So, um and and again, like I it was a tough thing in that finale. There was a lot of stuff to satisfy. And if my in and, and for me, if my big if my if my big issue is we're you know we're ignoring the two vision fight and we're ignoring what Monica Rambo is doing on the ground because we're dealing with Wanda and Agatha fighting in the sky. And if, well, you know, it, it, there's a lot of spinning plates and you're not going to satisfy all of them. And all these plates are spinning at the same time. And I just have to be like, Hey man, we're going to go away from Monica for a bit. Right. She's not just going to be run, running around doing a bunch of stuff. You know, there, there's, they, a, they, there's a lot that I have to just kind of be like, dude, Jonathan, it's a great show. Deal with it. They, 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 they gave her a bunch of, of time, you know, and look, you know, the promise of the focus that, that, that she got in, you know, in, uh, you know, what was it? We now interrupt this broadcast. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, that was, that was her big episode. Right. You know, and then, you know, so what was that? It was episode four. Um, so I, I think that made us feel like she'd be much more of a focus, particularly in that little cliffhanger, you know, um, tag that we got in, in episode, episode seven. seven yeah you know so yeah i mean I, I definitely thought she'd do more but she had a pivotal moment you know um she's definitely wrapping it up at the end there um i think they did a really good job of establishing her character uh so that when we get to captain marvel 2 it's not out of nowhere and yet what they've done i mean i could i could see very clearly that and this is something i think they've done all along really well is while all of the movies and the show benefit from you having seen everything, if you don't, you, you're not going to be lost. You can tell, so she'll come in, and if you only see the Captain Marvel movies, there'll be a reference to her being the little girl and all that, and you're not going to be lost, and someone will make a comment about how she got powers, you know, and, and that'll be that. that I, I think I've met at least 10 people who've told me that WandaVision was their entry into the Marvel Universe, and they mm -hmm. weren't sold on the Marvel Universe until they had Disney+. Plus. And they, maybe they got it for the Mandalorian. They started watching WandaVision because you know did, Disney's. Did they watch the Legends a, thing or now? <laughs> I don't. I, I don't know if they watched that twenty-minute Legends like thing that they aired before the first episode of WandaVision, where they showed just the clips. But I know a lot of people who started watching WandaVision because it looked quirky, inviting, and non-superheroic. And then they went back and started kind of reverse engineering the story of the of Wanda and Vision, and it led to them watching all of the disney all of the the marvel films and oh, great and i thought that it was a really smart entry point and it only came about really because of the pandemic because if you remember the first disney plus marvel show that was slotted to for release was falcon and winter soldier which we're going to get right. in two weeks but covid pushed that one because it, i think it was a a bizar bigger physical production i mean because of the plot of wandavision this is a fairly com contained production yeah but, yeah but Falcon and Winter Soldier, I think, has a, a bit of a, a wider production that did get shut down a bit more because of COVID. And it caused it to leapfrog over WandaVision, which I think is really smart because if you well, get it doesn't matter. There's nothing it, in it. It ultimately doesn't matter. But if you get but if you but if you're new to the Marvel universe and you don't necessarily want to do the Marvel Universe stuff and you got Disney Plus for your kids or you got it because you wanted to watch Star Wars or Mandalorian, and uh and you get Falcon and Winter Soldier. I don't think you're going to get the female viewership that WandaVision got. WandaVision I'll tell you, a huge female no, viewership, but I, and they they embrace the show. So my wife is uh, is a television writer, um, and she's all about story. And she had seen only a couple of Marvel movies when we met, and then with my stepson, we sat and we we watched them all from the beginning. Um, she had seen Black Panther and loved it, but then was shocked that Captain America had a much as much heart and soul. You know, she just, you know, so she, and she often says to me what an amazing thing they've done to all these, you know, spinning plates and bring all these things together. But pretty consistently, you know, the moment that for us as fanboys, like we go, oh, wow, like civil war and, you know, everyone coming together in the fight, like she checks out in the big fights. I'm She's with like, her. okay, to, you know, to her, I, I, it's well, just. I'm with her. I'm with her. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, and the reason I'm bringing that up is, so when she sees the, 
um, trailers for Falcon Winter Soldier, she's like, ah, you can watch that one without me. And she'll end up watching it, you know, mm -hmm. but it doesn't seem that appealing to her. WandaVision, she absolutely loved. Um, now, I thought it was interesting because I know some fanboys, uh, several fanboys in the first couple episodes were like, weren't getting it. Like, was well, this going to get better? Oh, yeah. But, you know, as, as a true fan of television, um, I love it from the get go because for me, like, you know, going through all the, the sitcom tropes and seeing the history of that. But there are a lot of people that are into the Marvel movies that aren't particularly into old sitcoms. And, and I think you know? that those are fans of the spectacle of the Marvel films and they want right. to see, you know, Hulk fight Iron Man and stuff like that. But I think I agree a lot more with Stephanie in that perspective that all the spectacle of the world doesn't matter without great character. And when I was watching sure. the first three episodes that are very heavy in mystery, and they definitely had like some really great water cooler time between episodes. Those first two episodes dropped together, but then you get a, a, a week to think about it before you got episode three. And episode four isn't until you start getting some of the answers of what's happening on mm -hmm. the outside world with that Monica Rambo episode. And it did a great, it did a great uh, job of, of explaining uh, how people's reactions were to the five year gap because of the, the snap and this and that. I thought that was episode, episode four was great. And I think it did get those fanboys on board. But those first three episodes to me were so representative of her internal like struggle and what was going on in her, the mental health issue with Wanda and just reminding you, oh yeah, she lost vision. She lost Pietro and before that she lost her parents and this is, mm -hmm. a, this is somebody who definitely 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 is struggling and building and fabricating her own way to survive and so there was a, a tragic element to those first three episodes that you know and plus all the little mysteries and you see the sword well, logo all that stuff that, that kind of gets you plot wise to go but and, and the commercials the commercials are telling you the I commercials are telling you it's about her they're telling you it's about her upbringing they're, they're showing you her and all this stuff and um it reminded me of lost uh, in a bit and how, remember those early seasons yeah. of lost where absolutely we, had, we, we were like what does that mean what is that you know lost didn't necessarily pay it off in the way that wandavision paid it almost pretty much everything off i don't think there's anything paid off except maybe there was a you know i remember one of the early <laughs> plot points was a missing persons or a, a you know a uh, somebody who was in um in uh protection witness protection that was right. in westfield and that was like a jimmy woo plot point i don't know if that one ever got answered but uh i remember it vaguely it's not clear who it is um the Ralph thing is interesting because so that that was agnes's seeming husband right and you know it's Ralph boner right so Growing Pains callback. <laughs> I do remember Boner from Growing Pains. Yeah. I also think that it was Marvel's kind of like, hey, fanboys, I know what you wanted. We didn't give it to you. Surprise. And here's a little honk on the nose for uh, for falling for it. Enjoy it. Not only We're going to add a little bit of insult to injury on you. <laughs> we're not going to go down that easy. I know you all wanted an X-Men Fox crossover and all of that. And for, you know, we all, we all took that bait. We all thought. Well, well how, how could was, you not? Right. How could you not? Um, and that's, you know, talking about that stuff. Um, obviously th that, that's the giant manipulation, you know, um, for some reason for me, I was more okay with this one than I, I felt robbed in Iron Man three. With the when Mandarin. You found out that the Mandarin wasn't anything but. But now you're going to get your Which ten then, rings in the Shang Chi right. movie. Exactly. So yes, the Mandarin. All hell the Iron, king. The Mandarin and Iron Man three uh, didn't hurt me as much. Well, they set up the Mandarin in Iron Man one, and, it, right. and it's a really great promise of there's a terrorist organization, and it's and they're, that's how they're going to bring the Mandarin into the Marvel universe. Um, my issues with. I, with Iron Man 3 were always character. It always felt like a character assassination on Tony and Pepper that, you know, suddenly Pepper doesn't recognize an ex-employer of hers and things like that. I'm just like sitting here saying, no, no, no. These, these are two brilliant people. And no matter what Tony went through in Avengers, Pepper is still somebody who like runs a leading robotics company at the top yeah. of their game, a multi-billion dollar company. 
they also run a, you know, in Iron Man 2, they ran an expo with all of their com- competitors in the, you know, the whole field was there. And she doesn't recognize somebody who's on the cover of magazines as her ex employee. Come on, don't do that. To Ke- don't do that to Pepper. Don't do that to Tony. Don't do that to the audience. And don't do that to the audience. So that was my issue with, with Iron Man 3. If, sure. if, if those characters had been done, you know, consistently with what we'd seen in the previous movies, the Mandarin thing, I would have been like, okay, that's fun. And I think that's why this doesn't bother me. The Quicksilver thing doesn't bother me, the bait and switch stuff, because at the end of the day, this is a great series and Wanda and Vision were explored in ways that we wanted them to be explored and that we were satisfied by. So do we have to wait a bit for Quicksilver to possibly return to the Marvel Universe? Sure. Yeah. It, great. Looking forward to it. Do we have to wait a bit for the X-Men Universe to join the M- MCU? Yeah, great. Looking forward to it. You know? Listen, awesome. the bottom line is, is the interesting manipulation is because they, they're they very canny in pardon that pun yeah. in how they drop information. So they know that they told everyone that it's Dr. Strange and the multiverse of madness. So they've told us the multiverse is coming. They teased it in, in far from home and said it wasn't real there, but we all know, and they know we all know that all this casting talk about who's appearing in the next Spider-Man, you know, it's all being teed up. So then they throw that in and it's, yes, they're playing with us, but go with it because it's, it's still coming, mm-hmm. you know? So, I, I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm fine with that. It, it's clear. There's a plan. Listen, if, if I had any inkling and I don't think it was a plan with the Mandarin, I think they went one way and then they course correct with all hail the King, you know, and, and that's fine, but at least they course corrected. Um, speaking of other things that are maybe manipulations, maybe not, um, you know, we all were obviously speculating on who's behind everything. And, I know my wife felt very strongly that it needed to be Wanda and ultimately it really was Wanda with Agnes kind of manipulating some things. I think Agnes was thrown in there as Agatha Harkness um, and was definitely upsetting things, right? She was the one that kept suggesting, you know, things were not what they seemed. Yes. She was provoking her in order to steal her powers, which was a great motivation because they, it dovetailed with where Wanda was going naturally. She was stoking that fire for her own needs. And I thought that was really great because there was that, uh, that when you're watching episode eight and you're seeing Agatha line everything up and goad her further, you start to wonder, wait, like she's not necessarily entirely a villain too, because you have that really beautiful scene at the beginning of the episode where Agatha is being put on a stake and burned by other witches and her mother. And you're in, and she's victimized right off the bat and you feel some sympathy for her, yeah, but she's not straight up but a victim because because she's acting right, right? right. and well, so it's it's a real they, they, they twist that on its head a bit. It's like totally. it's, it's the witch burning, but it isn't because she's really evil and she's faking and she's you know really right. I mean you know but, but it, she, it, it's you interesting. Know, I mean credit straight up credit to Catherine Hahn. She oh she she's fantastic. All the credit she gets because oh. she played it closer to the middle than she needed. You know she at times she went full villain, at times she went full sympathetic. And there were definitely times in episode eight when you're watching the history of Wanda and, and Agatha talk her through her trauma. We were thinking, maybe she's not so bad. <laughs> and then right. she pulls up the dark hold in episode nine, and you're like, oh no, she's evil. That's one of the worst things in the Marvel universe is the exactly. dark hold. And, no, and, no, and, no. and so, so you brought up the dark hold. Where, where I was going with this is, you know, so comic fans were speculating that Mephisto would be behind everything. And my opinion was, I just looking at what the MCU is doing and coming back around to what we were saying before about things being grounded and recognizing that you know it's you know it's Disney everything else, you know, the comics, Marvel and DC both they kind of go everywhere. You know, if it's in the 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 public consciousness, they go there. So they totally go to religious places and they they bring in religious iconography and characterizations, all that, all the time. Um, you know, the specter is the, you know, the, the arbiter of vengeance of God in the DC universe and things like that. So, you know, and they've had their demons, they've had their devils. So they have Mephisto as a character and Mephisto is the devil or a devil, because in Marvel, there's a lot of different versions demons, of different kinds of demons, right. all that, you know, and, and, and much like the, the Thor Asgardian thing, it's, it's entities that are, you know, exist on different planes of existence and, 
but is not what the devil is. You know, you, you can get into it. And my opinion was I could not see um, them making a choice to straight up do a character Mephisto because then it's the devil, you know, and that just doesn't hold for me. Now, my yes. opinion was that if anything, they've already established a character that fits all of that, which is Dormammu. Yeah, and Dormammu, you right? know him as the main villain from Doctor Strange. Right. Dormammu, Who, I, I could see as the villain. I couldn't see her, see. I couldn't see him as a villain in. Well, wait, Wanda. wait. No, that, but but that's just it. So, Dormammu, I, I think based on all this, still comes into play. So in Doctor Strange, what we what we find is you only see him at the end, but Cassilius is getting power from him. You find that the Ancient Ones live forever because of power from him. It's all consistent with a subtle thing that they always did in the Doctor Strange comics, which is calling on these extra-dimensional beings yeah. for power. By the power of the Vishanti, yeah. you know? It's always that, you know? Um, Sidorak, all of it, <laughs> you know? So... I was wondering early on without knowing about this, obviously I, I, you can't know about this Scarlet Witch thing because it's a brand new thing, this prophecy thing. So I was wondering you know, how'd she get more powerful? Had she done something like Cassilius and made some kind of deal, which would be in line with Mephisto, except that it would have been Dormammu. So they didn't do that, but they brought the Darkhold in and the show ends with her studying the Darkhold. Okay. I and loved the, when I saw the Darkhold, I got so excited. But, but here's the thing. So you, you just watched, you know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. You caught up on that. And they established that the Darkhold, they reference it with Doctor Strange. That's related to Dormammu. Yeah. And the Darkhold, so, Geekscape, is if you want to go and just watch what is pertinent to WandaVision, season four of the Darkhold has uh, Ghost Rider in it. It's got the Darkhold. That's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And you also want to watch season two of runaways. of runaways which i just started this morning ian and i really am looking forward to, to finishing around the last two seasons of runaways because man, yeah, it's good when, when agents of shield ended and i think i was texting you through the end of agents of shield the last two or three seasons uh big props to agents of shield there's a lot of stuff introduced in that show that i would love to see return to the uh to the mcu and there are characters that i loved that did not make it to the end of agents of shield and these are classic Marvel characters, uh, not just ones introduced in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., although those Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. characters I would love to see in the MCU as well. But I know geeks are all talking about, hey, when are we going to get the Netflix you know, characters back? And when are we going to get Daredevil and Punisher back and this and that? You know what? I want to see Ghost Rider brought in. I want to see Crusher Creel brought in. I want to see all well, these characters that were in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and done really well. I want to see their place in the Marvel universe. And even no, if they didn't I, make it to the end of the series, it's comics. You know, they can bring them back. Totally. Well, here's the thing. I mean, by using the dark cold there, you know, and they never need to say anything more than that other than to say like, Hey, this has been there before it counts to me. That's it, it's a nod and a wink that great. That stuff's out there. Maybe you'll see them. Maybe you won't. But coming back to my point about Dormammu is I'm wondering now if what they're setting up in this phase of, Dormammu is the big bad. They may be building up to a bigger fight with Dormammu. Like Thanos was in the yes. first phase, uh, first three phases of Marvel. Yeah, exactly. So, so you think Marvel phase four's big villain is Dormammu? I, I'm, I'm not definitively saying that. I think that going to the Darkhold here shows that it's going to play in bigger, and you know, and the whole notion of what she's awakened and everything else. That that's what that's what makes me think that. I mean. It's kind of was a simple fix with Doctor Strange, right? Mm -hmm. And there's no way it's over. And <laughs> Dormammu doesn't have a, 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 a quick fix. And no. I, and I do want to talk about Doctor Strange because Doctor Strange was my failed prediction that, that we would right. see Benedict Cumberbatch by the end of episode nine coming in. But it goes back to what I was saying about my, my, my little quibble with Monica Rambo being a little bit passive towards the end of episode nine is, well, you know what, Jonathan, you can have Monica Rambo active and you can have Dr. Strange come in, but every time one of those characters comes and starts to interfere with the fight, it says it does less for Wanda and having Dr. Strange come in and fix things is not necessarily the message that I think we want to have, especially not on in international women's day well, when we're recording, but it, this should be Wanda's story and Wanda should be, the uh she should be the the person who fixes things that she helped create you know what i mean and, i, I and agree with that well, i what, like what i would like dr strange what, but, but what i would like here's the thing is i haven't heard this definitively i suspect that the tag at the end with her studying the dark hold mm -hmm. 
was out of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Sure. I think that somebody online was talking about how the film format was different or how the aspect ratio was different. And I'm right. like, you know what? I just like that, that she's at the base of a mountain because it's shout out it's to Mount Wondegore. Yeah, <laughs> right. But, I love but, it. But 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 again, I, I think and I, I'm sure that's the case. I mean, and I can find out, but um I, I'm listen, it's consistent with with what they've done in the past, right? With with tags. That that's what it is, you know. Like yeah. you know, the, the end of Ant Man, you, you you get the, the you know, yeah. You get the, the end the of Civil War. Division, yeah. That last tag was a straight up call to, hey, Doctor Strange Two is coming out March twenty twenty one or twenty two. Right. Twenty two. Be yeah. ready. Um, real quick, Ian, I wanted to talk about some comments. Sorry, Geekscapist, but if you're watching live, we're getting comments. Feel free to comment. But uh, the first one, Ian, I just want to say right off the bat, Bolt T says Ian looks younger now than fifteen years ago. How did that happen? Well, eat your Wheaties, and uh, you know I went over to Ian's new house. You might see boxes in the background of Ian's window. Ian moved into a house this weekend, and I went over to drop off that microphone that Ian's using to record Geekscape, and he sounds great. Um, and he was converting his garage into a gym. That is how you look 15 years younger. You got to be as ripped as Ian. Um, <laughs> I also have uh, Anvil Atomic actually had a little bit of a gripe. He said, I wish the show was towing the line of absurd, weird show stuff in reality, like they did maybe in the first three episodes. The last few episodes turned into a standard issue superhero show. Um, I don't think it went full Avengers in those last couple issue uh, episodes. Maybe in episode nine, you could say that it went a little higher concept, but you still had beautiful sequences, like uh, when Wanda turns to Vision, when she's saying goodbye and says, you are the best parts of me. We still had the ship of Theseus sequence, which I think... You know, vision punching vision, I don't think is exciting. I think I, I think Stephanie would agree with me that that stuff is not exciting. That's just what, where does that end? But vision, but it's necessary, you know, yeah, and, 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 yeah, and yeah, they we, have we that that have cinematic level of facts. It's great, sure. you know. But having that that fight resolve itself in yeah. the best vision way by saying, "Hey, logically, you want to kill Vision? I am probably not Vision." Have you heard of the ship of Theseus? But of course, and having that logic battle yeah, I loved is it. so much better than having them just punch each other until one of them gets destroyed. Uh, I do have questions about that, but um, but it's, uh, Anvil Atomic, I do see what you're saying. There was definitely a little bit of a tone shift towards the end of the series, but I don't think it went full superhero, and I don't think it dipped in quality. I think that we started to marry the two you know, into uh, something that would lead into the rest of the MCU. Uh, we have a little by, bit by of the a, way, of a edge same thing with, Oh, go ahead. Same thing with, with the, with the Wanda um, Agatha fight, you know, mm -hmm. ultimately she beats her cause she's smart. It yeah. not, wasn't about, Oh, I'm just more powerful and stronger. Yeah. Uh, we she was couple, dealing with a siphon. We have a couple edge Lords on our YouTube uh, channel. I mean, one of them is even called cracked edge. So he's the total edge Lord saying, Hey, how can this show be good when DC is better? Okay. That's fine. Uh, whatever. Uh, Bold T says trolls have invaded the chat. That is true because he follows it up with Fantastic Four 2015 is a good movie better than Avengers Endgame. At that point, okay, you're basically just, just negating uh, anything you've ever said, and uh, you can just you know, you, know, it, there's, there's you didn't so even need to say better. There. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, 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 you stop at Fantastic Four 2015 is a good movie because nobody thinks that. I mean, Josh Trank doesn't think that. Yeah, I think at that point, um, there's so many good hobbies, that, but that's a different episode. If you want to subscribe to Geekscape, future episodes will try and find you a new hobby than going on YouTube and becoming an edgelord in the uh, chats. <laughs> but hey, that's what Geekscape is good for, is we can give you some hobby suggestions and things like that. Lou Frigno Jr. and I last week were talking about exercise and fitness and getting out there and like how to cut weight during the pandemic. So go back and listen to that episode if you want to have some new hobbies. Um, all right. Um, you know, to their their credit, though, Cracked Edge says, I, I do want some new hobbies. Well, you've came to the right place, Cracked Edge. Uh, we do like your humor. We do like the fact that you're in the chat <laughs> joking about stuff. Um, and we do love DC, man. Uh, I know Ian loves DC. Sure. We just love all of geekdom. And you know what? Look, you know, I, I grew up in a time because I'm old as fuck. I grew up in a time when they were literally the people saying, you know, Marvel versus DC and all that. And I never understood it. To me, I was like, look, you know, I have my favorite characters. Those are the two different companies. I mean, prior to Crisis in the mid 80s, unfortunately, DC had some great characters. They didn't have the best editorial. They were kind of stuck in an 
an old way of thinking. And when they quote unquote moralize things, the writing got better. And listen, the argument was made through the nineties that the writing was much better at DC, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but again, you know, I mean, I love Superman, Batman, you know how much I love Nightwing. I mean, I can go on and on well, and Ian, you know, name all the DC characters, you know, two, in two but weeks, I, you're, you're going to be right back here as we talk about well, Snyder. Game. Right. So and, and, <laughs> we'll and that's kind of where I'm going with it. Where, where, where I'm going with it is, you know, there have been times that there have been great DC movies and not as great. There have been times when there weren't great, very great Marvel movies, you know, until Iron Man. I mean, I think the Blade movies were good, but for Blade the most part, good. you couldn't get a good Marvel movie. Well, you, yeah. We got some good super uh, DC movies before, long before we got good Marvel movies. Right. Um, yeah, that, that's true. But man, X-Men changed a lot. Blade changed a lot. We got to give it credit. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that that for you know the first two Sam Raimi Spideys were uh, for yeah. me at least they were note perfect. I thought absolutely. They were great. Um, you know what? Just enjoy that fandom. I still don't think there's anything that's been put to celluloid in the superhero genre that's as good as the first thirty minutes of Richard Donner's Superman. And I don't care if the Marvel that. fanboys come yeah. to arrest me. I hear the sirens outside. That's what happens when you podcast. Uh, next I, I I actually I actually watched the Donner Superman with my wife and stepson during COVID. And she was blown away. The production value, everything. Minutes are it, perfect. It's just a great movie. Yeah, that, it's, that Mario it, it's Cuso just script. a great movie. Yeah, I think in those first five minutes, you have everything that you need. The Krypton stuff is so tight, and they introduce so many characters and threads. I have nothing but love for the first thirty minutes. Once you get into like the 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 stuff in uh, Metropolis and a little bit well, of a silly uh, listen Lex, listen it starts getting a little uh, loose for me uh, but jo we can Jonathan talk about not, that not well not to cut you off but I think that probably belongs in the Zack Snyder's Justice League podcast yes, not this I, one. I would love a little so bit more of that yeah let's, let's save that um, yeah and Ian you know what like it'd be fun to do specials where we go back and revisit some of the stuff that wasn't out during Geekscape like maybe we go back and watch like, I'd love that. The Richard Donner cut or, sure. you know, the Tim Burton Batman. Maybe when, you know. I did that this quick, year too. Yeah, real quick before we get back to WandaVision. There's comic it, continuations of both the 78 uh, Donner uh, Superman and the Tim Burton Batman from 89. And they're, they're continuing. On and and Wonder comics. Woman 77. And, well, those have yeah. already come out. But I think when the comics come out for the for the Donner and Tim Burton stuff, let's rewatch those and talk about them on the Geek. Sure. Stuff. All right. I'm down. Cool. All right, WandaVision. Um, we didn't get Mephisto. I think that, you know, Marvel is so expansive that even though you're arguing Dormammu may be the big bad of Phase 4, obviously we're going to get Kang in Ant-Man and the Wasp. Uh, we're going to get yeah. that in the third Ant-Man movie. And slowly but surely for Phase And I think four, Kang d does blow up into, and it, it, obviously the big Avengers villain that he is, and that, right. that will be a part of a later phase. And I um, think that you're going to get, you're, we're going to start working our way towards those X Men and Fantastic Four as well as we go to Phase Five and maybe mm -hmm. a Galactus villain for Phase Five. I think Dormammu and Sorcery might be the big villain for state for for the fourth phase of Marvel. Um, I don't think that negates a Mephisto at some point. There are different characters; they can coexist. And Mephisto, in the iteration of MCU, we have like reinterpretations of characters all the time. May not necessarily mean the devil as far as the mcu goes cool. I know granted i just don't, i don't see a need for both i think that it, it'd be repeating itself i think that the, the mephisto storylines they want to do i would think they would do with, with dormant but we'll see mm -hmm. um one thing jim does ask jim pogranelli says anyone else wondering if this version of the dark hold has the montessi formula and will tie the question blade yeah we're gonna get that blade movie too we haven't been talking about it but we will be getting about we will uh, be getting the blade movie I, I would expect that they'll, you know, they've established it now. They said, hey, you know, this is definitely still part of this that, you know, notwithstanding, because that's the question, right? The, the previous supposed MCU TV stuff, we, we're not sure what counts and what doesn't. So straight up, Dark Cold counts. I would expect that we'll see that. I think everything but the Inhumans counts. And and I'm good with that, and I count it. No, but that's no. just it, right? Because he, that Inhuman show doesn't line up very well with the Inhuman stuff in Agents of Shield, right? So. Well, okay. So Ian, we didn't get the Mephisto here. We didn't get Doctor Strange here. We got a pretty damn good series. But we got a reference to Doctor Strange, and so we and we know it's coming. And we 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 got a really good Wandavision thing. So so let's discuss this. There've been so, some talk about is there potentially a Wandavision season two. Um, I know that you heard something in casting notices and all that. 
at the moment, it doesn't feel like there's any need for a season two, but depending on how Dr. Strange ends, um, I think we have a pretty good indication, even just from that tag, notwithstanding anything else we may have heard about casting and things like that, that she's going to get the kids back. That's what she's doing. She's studying the dark hold to find a way to bring them back. And vision exists. Uh, I think the fact that he takes off the way he does is indicative for me that he's gotten the memories and he's processing them and he may not have the emotions with them, a la the West Coast Avengers right. uh, comics that are called out by his white appearance. So talk me through that exchange because the ship of Theseus stuff was pretty great. And then you have the, the vision that is the recovered body vision that we have for the first eight episodes. And then we have the, I'm going to call it John. Well, he's Murray. not the recovered body. He's, right. That he's, was a lie. The, he's a right. completely fabricated from right. the Mind Stone within Wanda vision. And then you have the non-Mind Stone John Byrne vision. The the well, West Coast, Coast Avengers looking vision. Oh, 3D printed vision. So you have 3D mm -hmm. printed vision uh, versus the vision that we quote unquote know that came from Wanda. Um, it resolves with those sentiments or at least memories going into John Byrne vision. And then that John Byrne vision just takes off and is out there somewhere. Right. By the way, did, 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 you, did you appreciate the when you first see that white vision and the way you see him? Mm -hmm. That they have him in like that display case? It was awesome. A la, a, a la the original Human Torch? Uh, the, I, didn't the the human torch ten, uh, I didn't make the Human Torch connection, but I did love that, that you had texted me and said, hey, this is what John Byrne did with, the, with vision in the original, where there was an, a vision that just was emotionless. And that was like 1982. Right. Um, and Chris Robinson's in the chat. No, it, was, it was later than that. Yeah, he's uh, he said episode eight plot twist blew my mind. Um, yeah, no, it, I think that having I thought the two visions were going to merge, but ultimately the one that was in what from Wanda's mind is the one that ceased to exist, and now we have a brand right. new three D printed and, vision that's out there. And it's know? important that that his memories would only be up until he died, as it were, so he wouldn't have any memories of the series right um but again the question is fine he has the memories does he have the emotions and that would and that to me calls out what we were getting in infinity war with shuri where she's creating you know she has his memories his engrams but the question was what does the mind stone bring to it what's going to be lacking mm -hmm. without the mind stone how much of him is there how much of him was more you know when the Mind Stone came into the body, you know, Jarvis had been evolving. So, so, so here's the question. It, do the emotions come from the Mind Stone? You know, I, I guess what I'm saying is I can see there, you know, a second series being more about his journey. He could Incredible Hulk his way around the, the world and kind of... Uh... Well, but it, or it might be him coming back and, um, you know, with the family and finding a way to fit in with them and, you know, finding his emotions all that. So, you know, I, I could see where they, you know, it's not been officially announced, but I could see where um, they could be doing that. Mm -hmm. I could see where their story, whereas you, it seems like, oh, the series finale, it seems like the story is over. Well, it's a different story at that point. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily I, I suspect, have to be called WandaVision. Right. But what I'm saying is, so here's the thing, WandaVision, and, you know, m my wife knows a writer that was on it. I mean, the show was written years ago. Mm -hmm. They're so far ahead with this stuff. So, you know, the fact that Dr. Strange comes out in a year, you know, and you would imagine if they are doing that, they would want that show to be out in 2022. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have a March 2022 release date for Dr. Strange 2. Right. So I'm just saying that if, if there are any plans to do a second season, um, I, I would think that's what that would be about. And I think it comes later. Um, as for whether or not we would see that, I mean, here at the bottom line is we're going to see that white vision again. Right. The question yeah. is where? Uh, well, so. when does Spider-Man 3 come out? In November? Uh, November of this year. Yeah. So we're going to have a little bit of Doctor Strange multiversity there as well mm -hmm. um but i don't necessarily think that we're going to be seeing that too much with the, with wanda i think that's going to be mainly peter's story and some yeah. some multiverse 
shenanigans there with Doctor Strange, you know, kind of playing the Peter Parker and Happy Hogan or the uh, Tony Stark Happy Hogan MCU tie-in role. Um, anything that might hint at where Doctor Strange is entering Doctor Strange 2 that you would see happening in the third Spider-Man movie? Uh, honestly, no, because I, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious. I didn't know if this would really, you know, listen, they teased, you know, the Nexus thing. Um, and we didn't really get the full on multiverse of things. Right. Um, we didn't really see it. Show. Do you think the Loki show deals with the Nexus and deals with, look, the, it, it makes sense that the Loki show, we know the Loki show deals with the, the time variance authority. So we know that that's dealing with divergent timelines. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so that definitely makes sense that we're going to get some of that. And the Loki show is coming up really quickly. Remember Falcon went to soldiers, only six episodes, and then we get Loki. That's insane. That's so, insane. yeah, I mean, Loki is, we're supposed to get the, is it May, June? I think it's I think May. It, yeah. I think it's so, early May. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, I mean, it's no, definitely no, is. You're, you're right. Uh, I'm sorry, Geeks Game is Black Widow 2. Or the Black May. Widow, the Black Widow film is supposed to be yes. May. I believe it'll it'll push just based on COVID, but maybe maybe Joe Biden will get the vaccine out and we can go see it in the theater. But uh, you know, also like Raya and the you know the Raya film on Disney Plus, if that was successful this past weekend, maybe Disney says, say, hey, there's a partial theatrical in some parts of the country that can justify Black Widow coming out in May, along with a $30 boost for Disney Plus if you want to see your Black Widow at home. Cool. And, I, and I, I see that being an option for early May as well. But yes, Loki's early June. And and, and, and let's address that real quickly. Um, and we don't have to go off into a deep uh, analysis of box office. But what the, um, the analysis about Raya showed is, and listen, this is sad for, for movie theaters, but at $30 to rent Raya, Disney's making as much money on that as they actually make. I think the analysis is something like for, for you know, three, four tickets. Wow. So while the actual dollar amount doesn't seem like it's as much in terms of from Disney's point of view, they're making their money. Mm -hmm. I think where it, what undermines where they really make a fortune on these big Marvel movies is repeat viewings, which they would lose because you've rented, you have it, right? For, I mean, how do those rentals work? How many times think, do you get to watch them? No, I think you have it for a few, for a couple of days. Okay, so, that, so then they could still get those repeat viewings. But after a while, it becomes free on your service. I think after about- Yeah, but month, that's not for months. Free, right, right. Um, Dep Jim depends on, that, that's about, you're referencing shortening the theatrical window, which they probably right. won't do for Black Widow. So if Jim has that. a question. Uh, since we got White Vision, what are your thoughts on us maybe getting Wonder Man and Grim Reaper? And listen, that'd be great. I know a lot of people were hoping that the missing person that they were referencing would end up being Wonder Man, you know, right. that they've already established that they had cast Nathan Fillion as Simon Williams. Well, Simon Williams, you know, was cast, so, uh, you know uh, that was cast for Guardians of the Galaxy 2 in a poster. Exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. <laughs> so it exists. I mean, listen, I, I would love it. You know, the tricky thing was so much, this series was so strongly influenced by that WandaVision, well, excuse me, Scarlet Witch and Vision um, maxi series, which was their second mini series. And it was also subtly, you know, influenced by the Tom King Vision mini series, mm -hmm. right? Um, the former strongly dealt with both Simon Williams, Wonder Man and the Grim Reaper you know, they, they were very, very much involved. Um, I had wondered throughout this, would we get something from them? But I think ultimately the problem is that, you know, it wouldn't have been organic because you haven't seen them before. Right. You know, we don't have with Vision the whole thing where his brain engrams were copied from Simon Williams, who had been Wonder Man, who was a double agent of the masters of evil who then turned on him in issue nine of Avengers and, you know, and then immediately died. But then years later, it turned out that, you know, the ion energy that he'd become just made him be dormant. <laughs> right. But, Sounds you know, so like and, a promising place for WandaVision season two. <laughs> listen again, I'd love it. But what I'm saying is that, so, you know, Ultron needed to get brain Engram from somewhere, whereas they solved that in age of Ultron by having Jarvis, Tony's AI evolve. So mm -hmm. they've done that. So they don't actually have the Wonder Man tie-in. Can they create it? Sure. 
but they don't have it. So it's not called out. And then, you know, Grim Reaper's Wonder Man's brother. So he resented Vision's existence and that whole thing. So, you know, um, yeah, you know, we, we just, we don't have that tie in the MCU. Yeah, we've got enough time though. I mean, I think that, uh, uh, let's see, um, Mario Alana says, hey, with another 20 MCU items announced, it would be quite a while before any potential season two anyway. You know what I mean? Like we have nothing but MCU stuff, like you said, coming out every month between now and like the next WandaVision show. There's well, well, that, that's just it. So sure, sure. I, I think that it could be a while, but at the same time, you know, they don't, they purposely only tell you like, you only know what's on the docket this year, right? Sure. You know, I mean, yeah, you know, we have, Falcon Winter Soldier next. We have Loki. We have What If. We have Ms. Marvel. We have She-Hulk. You know? And, and that's just the Disney Plus. And, and, and Moon Knight, right? Moon Knight. So that's what we know is coming, definitively, right? Beyond that, as I said, I would think if they're going to do a WandaVision series, a second season of sorts, we would get it sometime like late 2022 or maybe early 2023. We also have an I don't think it would be further out than that. We also have an announced Armor Wars film or yes series? that's right is that a, a series. series that's also a series and and so instead of tony it's going to focus on roadie sure and we'll who, see who, and it's going to exactly yeah, we'll they're going to set it up there oh. we'll see a roadie a little bit in uh in falcon and winter soldier which ian and i will do a wrap-up for as well i think the next wrap-up you and i are going to do is this snyder cut oh boy that's going to be some fun. Um, I'm going to do my homework. I'm going to rewatch Man of Steel. I'm going to watch the Ultimate Edition of BVS. What is that? Like, what's well, supposed to be in the Ultimate Edition? It's like, longer and yeah. more graphic and oh, supposedly great. smoothed out in some places. And frankly, I, I have never got around to watching it. So I'm going to do it before <laughs> before uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Is it, is I'm it on put HBO myself Max? Through it. It's, it's definitely yeah. on HBO Max. Oh, it's on HBO Max, yeah. But you know what I read? I read that that there was a little bit of a hiccup at the servers over at HBO Max, and um, they released the Snyder Cut accidentally for uh, two hours yeah. today. Before anybody caught it, people who were wanting to watch Tom and Jerry, Tom and Jerry yeah. ended up watching the Snyder Cut, and it was up for two hours before anybody caught it. So, But did the people that were watching it, did they get the whole thing, or did they cut off get cut off in the middle of the four-hour monstrosity that it is? Yeah, so what I want to know is how far into the Snyder Cut did they get before they realized yeah. they weren't watching Tom and Jerry? <laughs> like, when well. you have Batman, like smacking parademons with mallets at the beginning of the movie you might think that's tom and jerry you might be like well it looks like a cat and he's running around like smacking things eh, maybe this is tom and jerry uh okay. having watched the tom and jerry movie Ian, i texted you and said you know what you should watch this with your stepson because i know that we're not oh, talking wow. wandavision here but i thought that the, the the tom and jerry movie was was okay um Anvil Atomic is on Twitch and he says, I just want to say that I love watching Ian and, ja and John Gap about nerddom. I've been watching you guys dissect media for years and I love every second of it. Robo titties, baby. I got to tell you, you know what? I, we agree with you. Uh, we love Gabin. <laughs> I don't know. I just love talking to Ian. I went to drop off that microphone on uh, yesterday and sure enough, we're standing there for an hour just talking to my friend Ian in the front yard of his, you know, new house. And, uh, Dude, I love having you on the show. Is there any rock that we didn't uh, turn over in talking about WandaVision? I mean, there's just so much here that's great. And Yeah, uh, so much to say about this series. I mean, you know, listen, the truth is, if we could have figured it out, we, you know, I know you've referenced it on the other show, but, you know, I mean, we could talk about it each episode individually. You know, there, there's a lot to say. Um, overall, I think as their um, inaugural uh, series, I think they did a great job. I was really impressed by it. Um, and I look forward to seeing what comes next, both in terms of these characters and the uh, other MCU shows. I mean, we'll have Falcon and the Winter Soldier, as you said. It's it's less than two weeks. Yeah, we get Bat Rock the Leaper back. I'm excited about that. Yeah, you actually get the Baron Zemo. Like you get the Baron Zemo the, mush with mouth the, mask. With the mask. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So and, and again, that that's the thing. They, they you know they don't feel the need to jump right to what you know, but they get there. You know, right. right. When I saw that in the Super Bowl trailer, that he had the mush mouth mask. Yeah, same. I was so excited. I was like, great. I like silly Zemo. Let's bring him in. I thought Daniel Brule was fantastic in, in yeah. Civil War, and it's cool that they're getting everybody together, and it's cool that we're going to have some Rhodey in there. And um, and uh, I, I'm into it. I'm into it. Agent Carter is in there. I'm I'm excited for the whole thing. 
uh, it is a different taste of Marvel, which is why I think that if y'all want to know more about the dark hold and how it was current, you know, previously represented in the MCU, go watch that agents of shield show and go watch runaways. I think runaways is on Hulu and agents of shield. You can find still on Netflix and go binge them. Cause I, I think that you'll get into it And to agents of shields credit when they let go of the edict of trying to tie in too much with the MCU and parallel the MCU. And you watch agents of shield to see which MCU characters show up when they let go of all that stuff and started doing their own thing and discard, you know, I think that that show got a lot better and was a lot more fun. I still love a lot of the stuff that they were doing in the later seasons. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Well, Ian, dude, uh, that's WandaVision. Geeks gave us, that's our episode. Uh, we want to know what you think as well. So feel free to find us online. You can find Ian on Twitter at, what is your Twitter? I don't, I don't know my Twitter handle. You tell me, I don't look at it. I think it's Ian l kerner on twitter oh that uh, makes sense mark cruz says who else ugly cried in the last two episodes i totally did yeah i think heidi cried and, and i watched them more than once and bawled <laughs> both times yeah multiple times yeah okay all right i love it i i uh, i bawled when it was over because i wanted more of it uh <laughs> that's kind of what i was into uh fat alice is great discussion guys love you well we love you too fat alice um and we, we love doing these shows. So subscribe to Geekscape. Share Geekscape with your friends. If you're listening to this on the podcast, definitely hit that share button. Leave us those stars there. Leave us a little review. That definitely helps us. And um, yeah, share Geekscape with your friends. We're on all the socials. We're on Clubhouse now, if y'all are into Clubhouse. I got Ian on the Clubhouse, so we'll have discussions on there as well about all the geek stuff. But you can find us on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. There's a lot of activity going on on, on all those. So Come join us. Have fun. We're here every week with some form or another of Geekscape. And of course, if you're just looking for podcasts to listen to, search for Geekscape in your podcast app and you'll find like the fact that we have like 14 shows on the network now or something like that. We have a video game show. We've got music shows. We've got horror shows. We've got filmmaking shows. We've got all sorts of fun shows that cover pop culture on the Geekscape network. So credit to Matt Kelly and everybody for doing that. Um, Ian, love talking about to you um and i love having you on um that's been our wandavision wrap-up episode geeks gave us uh thanks for joining us and until next time geekscape forever don't hate create